aim of this experiment is to find the frequency and the voltage of the AC signals or verify it and also to observe how massage is figures works. So basically to conduct this experiment we need a cathode ray oscilloscope of a frequency measurer or like a function generator and uh, first we need to connect the voltage source or the uh, function, generator. function generator to the cathode ray oscilloscope and later we need to take the out here we will be getting a sign signal which we need to measure as a voltage in the using multimeter. This is the signal generator. The signal will be shown in the graph here as a sine wave and the same signal's voltage will be shown. First, this is the output of output the signal of generator. Output signal. That will connect it to the input of the CR. 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 Basically, we are joining this and this. We are using two of these wires to join positive, positive, negative. And now we have connected signal generator to the CRO and now we need to connect the function generator to the multimeter so that it should be a parallel connection hmm. positive connection to the positive negative connection negative to the negative. negative basically take positive from here take positive from here take positive from here connect them take negative take negative take negative and connect them so we'll get yeah. two bunch of signals and switch on both of them right so first keep up maintain a frequency frequent a constant frequency hmm. so basically you're going to measure it to be one one kilohertz you can keep the frequency at any point, but for the sake of it, we will keep it at 1 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz. Or around 1 kilohertz. Not 1 kilohertz. We will start yes. with 1 kilohertz. So we will start with 1 kilohertz. So we will get for the, the first time signal. Yes. Trust In the phone, it looks like it's vibrating. Actually, it's not. For the first part of the experiment, to verify the voltage, the frequency must be uh, at a constant. Constant. Okay. So basically, now we are able to read the multimeter over here. Mm. Okay. For a certain amplitude, we are going to get certain voltage over here okay so we're now we are going to verify this voltage using the sign wave okay how we are going to do it so basically if it's if it's running so mm -hmm. basically we'll change the volts per division Old setting division. you okay. can change it to get a smaller wave or a larger wave depending on yours mm -hmm. and if you do change it over here you get a longer wave mm -hmm. if you do change it again you're going to wake up pick away so we'll take it an intermediate wave that is we have kept it at one volts per one division volt. You you need not actually keep it for, for one volt. No, you can. You should just get this graph. 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 Yeah. You okay. should you maintain this at a constant length where you can easily measure. Change the position of x such that one of the peaks touches the x-axis, and change the y-axis so that it touches, you can touches the, the height. so that it will be easier to measure the height. height. This is x-axis. Yes. Okay. This is for the this is y-axis. Y-axis. Okay. Yeah. Measure it so that it it fall it falls on the grid exactly yeah, on the grid. exactly on the grid so that it will be easier no, for us to measure yeah, it's exactly on the grid okay each division in the graph paper which you see it's going to be point two have to find the vertical length now so yeah. the vertical length is going to be one as this is five units two three now when you're reading three three point two you can change if you want to that's fine hmm. you can keep it at exactly like this can be one two 3, 3.2, 3.4 and 3.6. 3.6, right? It's exactly 3.6. Yeah. So it's 3.6. Yes. And we will be measuring the peak to peak height in order to verify the in AC voltage. First, we'll be taking down the readings off. We'll take down the multimeter reading. Yes. Here it says 1.59. We have to take 1.59 volts. Yes. So in the first column, you take the multimeter, multimeter reading. Second yes. column is the sensitivity, sensitivity, which is volt per division, which you'll be seeing actually here. using this. Here, this line, yeah, this, that one, can this line, right? It's one. Yeah. One volt. And oh, yes. peak to peak height. This to this, rate. whatever we measure. Yes. So, 3.6. So, you need to actually take from the device. Okay. Calculation. Calculation part is x, x into y, which is nothing but 3.6 into 1, which would give us 3.6. This is the VPP value. And VRMS formula is VPP divided by 2 root 2. And 3.6 divided by 2 root 2 would give you 1.27. Which is like almost the same as the multimeter reading. So we can try to just change the amplitude a bit. So we can the see the change the voltage. Changing when you change amplitude, nothing will change. That the frequency should remain constant. The frequency for, should remain constant. For this first part, the frequency should remain constant. So you just change the amplitude and set it up to a desired volt. That is, I've set it at three volts now. Hmm. So basically, I'm getting the sine wave. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll make so some change. So basically, change the amplitude. Let them see what happens to the voltmeter right. and what. Now, see volt meter reading you see is changing that is also changing, changing yeah. okay that's what happens when you change the amplitude now going to the second part to measure the frequency of it like compare the frequency of it you will set the amplitude to a constant voltage i'm taking to be one volt yeah voltage. let's take it to be one volt. now you can uh, take this at a very uh, low frequency or you can take it up high that's up to you 
so i'm going to set this as 500 hertz 500 hertz so it's uh, it's at 5 it's at 500 hertz hmm. so basically now what we are going to do here is here this setup should not be touched the volts perturbation is done so now we are going to work only with the time perturbation because we need the time factor to be seen when it comes to the voltage we are supposed to use only this one the, the time perturbation will be a constant the volts perturbation only will be changed so as to get a desired graph but in the second part when we are doing the frequency the volts perturbation will not come into picture only the time perturbation and the position knobs will come into picture okay so now i'm going to give certain uh, time per i'm going to take, take it i'm going to truncate the graph a bit so that it gets cleaner yeah. so now we can measure the length right so, but measuring the length should not be from height to height like this it should be a horizontal peak to peak one crest to another crest yeah okay so basically one wave length we are taking that's all yeah. okay so whatever is here you will write it here yes yes the frequency the no. observed frequency the distance between two consecutive crests crest. okay so it's going to be one one okay and, and the sensitivity is the sensitivity over here is time per division which is two and you please read the units also it's milliseconds over here because if it goes here it's microseconds it's in milliseconds now so it is two milliseconds as the time division, time division. which we have written it as two into ten to the power minus three seconds the time period what we will get over here is nothing but the product of horizontal peak distance and the sensitivity which is nothing but 2 into 10 power minus 3 into 1, which is 2 into 10 power minus 3. We know that frequency is nothing but the reciprocal of time period. So, it will be nothing but 1 by 2 into 10 power minus 3, which is nothing but 0 0.5 into 10 power 3, which is nothing but 0 0.5 kilohertz. So, we are getting the same value 0 and 10. So, again for next reading, what you have to keep the frequency to a different value, that is you keep it at like example if i keep it at a 600 600 hertz and on 600 hertz now you change the time per division time division here. depending on like if you're getting you don't need to change right? you don't need to change basically you can take the peak to peak distance, peak distance. but uh, but if it's like very small it will be in divisions so they won't be, they won't be able to uh, measure it properly yeah. so better make it in such a way that it's get it's a bigger graph bigger graph if, a big, if it's a bigger graph, it's a more accurate value yeah there. over the accurate value basically this reading will come here yes okay this distance will come, come here. The sensitivity, sensitivity is measure. here. It's one milliseconds. Yeah. Measure that it will come here. here. Okay. And the x y value. Will and you multiply this, this one, and one by that, you'll get fourth. I mean, fifth one, fifth column. We are going to observe the largest figures and we are going to measure the phase difference between them. Okay. So, for this, we need a normal um, apparatus as such. That is, we need a CRO, that is our cathode ray oscilloscope. Our function generator, our resistor and the capacitor are the extra things, two things which we need for this experiment. So coming back to the connections, now we'll connect the channel, the function generator to the channel 1 of the CRO. After connecting it from channel 1, we are going to connect it across the capacitor and from capacitor we are going to connect it to the resistor. So as we can see that this connection from the channel 1 it has been connected to the capacitor and from capacitor it has been connected to the resistor and as we can see from resistor now we are going to connect it to the the channel one yes so basically we are going to connect the resistor across the channel one now as shown in the pickup so we are going to complete this circ this circuit now we have connected this circuit completely now as per this connection we are going to connect the channel to parallel to the resistor first on the apparatus we we'll ground it first so after doing it to the ground what we'll do is we'll get a small da a dot on the os oscilloscope screen keep it to the center okay at the mid midpoint where the junction meets like this and then okay so basically the capacitor it doesn't matter whether you connect to, to h or l that is high or low it can be of any directions and please note that throughout the experiment this this point 0, 01 microfarads and 1 microfarad will be kept at 0 because you only re require the capacitor in terms of 0 0.1 microfarads that's it going back to the experiment so we left it at where where we are the grounding conditions for both the terminals as we can see here it's both grounded 
and we can see there is a nice little dot over here in the center of the uh, in center of the oscilloscope screen. Now we will give some capacitance as we can just measure like three point three microfarads, and we'll remove a resistance of four hundred ohms. Sorry, four hundred ohms. And next, correct. Now shift the terminals to AC as such as given here, you will get a nice ellipse over here. So as we can see now, we have applied a capacitance of 0.3 microfarads over here and we have removed a 400 ohms resistance, 400 ohms resistance and the frequency is being 953 hertz. Now we have all noted down this value, the capacitance to be 0.3 microfarads, the resistance to be 400 ohms and frequency to be 953 hertz. Now, we'll get a nice resurgence figure in the oscilloscope screen. So now we have to uh, we have to measure two lengths, that is B and one is A. How to measure B is, the point was, uh, so the ellipse is like this, the point is this. This is a geometrical center of the ellipse. So from here to this distance, that is the least distance of the ellipse is the B, it's known as B. So from here to here, if you calculate, it's going to be 1, 1 1.2. So you can see that one full unit is inside and there's 0.2 over here. So it's crossing at 0.2, so it's going to be 1.2 units. And now to calculate A, what you do is you just shift the position of the ellipse in such a way that you get the maximum point at here. Like this. Okay. So from here till here, the distance is going to be A. That is 1. 1.6 units point six. now we will calculate uh, by using these all values we are going to calculate two different things one is sine theta and one is tan theta so the sine theta is nothing but plus or minus b by a b by a so when we get the sine theta value uh, as we are going as we see here it's 0 0.75 we are going to take we are going to calculate theta that is nothing but sine inverse of this value will give us theta that is 48 point five nine degrees that's it. now theoretically to calculate tan theta we have a formula that is one by two pi fcr we have c here r here f here as we have already note, noted down the values so it's going to be f as 953 hertz capacitor as 0.3 microfarads and the resistance to be 400 ohms so now when we calculate this value we're going to get tan theta this is basically a simple calculation so please be careful with it and as we are getting we can see that we are getting 1.39 as the tan theta value okay now to calculate tan theta from uh, so to calculate theta from here you just take tan inverse of that value you're going to get c so basically these two uh, these two angles which we measured it should be nearly equal like it should be very close to each other that's always the difference for the second trial all you have to do is you have to ground both the inputs by pressing the button and then set the capacitance frequency and the resistance as desired. Usually one of these is changed per trial. Later, the dot that appears on the oscilloscope screen is brought to the center. Once the dot is brought to the center, the inputs are ungrounded. Now we get a beautiful ellipse. So that's your Lissajous figure. Basically, what we suggest is you mainly change the capacitance itself. Change any three, you will be getting different values. We have to get different theta values and they have to be similar in nature. But mostly what is suggested is you can change the C value and R value. So basically, you can, instead of 400 ohms, you can just remove another 100 ohms and make it as 500 ohms and then you can calculate the Lissajous figure. As we can see, it changed over here. So basically, this is how the experiment goes. Thank you.